Good afternoon, everybody. I'm your host, Lee Blickley from HuffPost um, and Book Club. We are talking about this new movie starring four beautiful, mature, experienced, successful women um, who decide to read Fifty Shades of Grey in their, in their book club. Uh, and, you know, what ensues? Madness, probably. We have new relationships are flourishing. Marriages are being tex uh, tested. And, of course... Uh, sex lives are being experimented with, which is always fun. Um, today we are joined by Candace Bergen, Mary Steenburgen, and Don Johnson, who star in the movie. And then we have the writer and director, Bill Holderman, and the writer and producer, Aaron Sims. So let's roll to the trailer first so you can get a glimpse at what we're talking about. Judge Myers? Yes. Rev up your love life with these tips. Do you need anything else, Your Honor? A man of your dreams is just a click away. No, I don't. I'm fine. Thank you. Yep. We are four smart, successful women. I don't need a man. What is the point? Who still has any interest? Ladies, I am not going to let us become those people who stop living before they stop living. I would like to introduce you to Christian Grey. This is for mature audiences. It certainly sounds like us. <laughs> oh, wow. Slim? My, oh my. What's it been, 40 years? That's impossible. That would mean I was only six. <laughs> this is gonna be a game changer. Ooh, you need some help? <laughs> I don't think you have that on quite right. Can you get me some scissors? I can't feel my feet. Do you even remember your last date? We're talking Nixon era. Hey! Shh. Pretty sure he knows you're in here. I don't care what society says about women our age. You are better at this than you think you are. The choice should be ours. Shut up and kiss me. Ow! Do we want another bottle? Yeah. Yes! Well, that looks like a lot of fun, right? Let's welcome the cast and crew of Book Club. Thank you all so much for being here. Um, well, let's. I want to go around this group right now and find out who of who of you have read Fifty Shades of Grey before you started filming this movie. Skimmed it for the naughty bits. <laughs> uh, also the naughty bits, but when it came out years and years ago, I have no association with Not, this. I, <laughs> I've only read the plot parts. No I've, naughty bits. <laughs> I've studied it very deeply. Yes, thank you. I studied it deeply, too, but years ago. Um, and Don, you mentioned your association. Of course, Don's daughter, Dakota Johnson, stars in the movie Fifty Shades of Grey, the movie, all three. Which I also movie. have not seen. I was going to ask you that. You haven't, is this well, a little awkward? Of course awkward? you were going to ask me that. Um, yeah, that. I just made a, a, a calculated decision early on that there are some images that you don't need in your head, especially if you're a father. Yeah. yeah. Good choice. Yeah. Um, so Bill and Aaron, uh, you of course wrote this and directed it. Um, what made you think of this idea and this concept to bring these four ladies together for a book club? I'll make Aaron answer the... <laughs> he keeps the doing this to me. Um, it was 2012 and the books had come out and Bill and I were working together um, at a production company and he decided that he was going to send the trilogy to his mom for Mother's Day. Oh, lovely. Great choice. Oh, yeah. <laughs> What a son. And that, that, yeah, that pretty much blew my mind, actually. So I decided, wow, that's genius. I'm going to send it to my mom and to my stepmom. And so we did for Mother's Day. And then the next day, we, we sort of had a conversation about that. And it led to the idea of this movie. We blame our moms yeah, so for this and so many things. <laughs> and then, Bill, is this your first uh, movie that you're directing? Yes. Congratulations. That Thank deserves a round much. of applause. Thank you. What a cast to get on your Don, first. Don's they just found out. out. The first time. <laughs> that's it. He, that's you. Wow. <laughs> he did a brilliant job. Really? How was it walking on set for this movie with these incredible, this incredible cast of of amazing actors? I just kept waiting to wake up. To be honest with you, I mean, it was such a blessing um, every day, and they were, uh, they made it easy. Mm -hmm. Truly. Yeah, what was it like, um, you know, working with some veteran actors in this who are, are very skilled, probably didn't need too much direction. Uh, did that make you nervous or were you more excited that they got to play a little bit more? Yeah, I mean, I think that made it much more comfortable because I was I had so much confidence that they were going to bring, you know, all the brilliance to the characters and make it full of life. So I think that, honestly, that collaboration just made it much easier. 
I was one panicking in the background yeah, going, oh my Aaron, God, it's Candace, it's Diana, I had Aaron, it's Donna. I had Aaron crying every day and that was like my emotional outlet. So I was, I was okay. Crying of happiness. Yes. <laughs> and so Mary, how did you get involved in this movie? Did you read the script and just respond to it right away? Um, I was the last person cast, but I have a feeling some of it may have had to do with doing a film that these guys uh, worked on called Walk in the Woods with Robert Redford. And I just played a little part, but I remember us all talking about that it would be fun to work together again. Is that accurate? Well, that and we're huge fans of yours. So those <laughs> two too. things in concert. <laughs> She's very steamer. Yeah. And um, <laughs> so, no, I was just sent the script. But when I was sent the script, I was also told who was going to be in it. And I knew before I read it that I was going to say yes to this because I'd be stupid not to. And then I read it, and it was the thing that was so extraordinary about what they created. Well, A, first of all, nobody makes movies where the four leads are our age, you know? Um, and number two, that all four of us had characters that were fully realized and had a crisis or something in their life that was compelling. And that was just so structurally brilliant. And then number three, it was funny. It made me laugh. It made me laugh, too. And I do love your point how each of you have such great stories. It's not like, you know, Jane or Diane have these stories and you guys are supporting characters. You are all leads. And I loved that. Uh, Candace, is that kind of something that drew you to this role and to this character? Is that, um, again, women your age are starring in this amazing movie? Yeah, it, it's that, that was a miracle, frankly. <laughs> and um, And to work with, I mean, to work with the actors was... Uh, spectacular and I met with Bill and I thought he's the nicest man and um, and the script was very simple very honest uh, um, funny mm -hmm. and um, and it really I I still don't understand how they got into the skin of people hundreds of years older than they are but uh, <laughs> but they did and 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 the audience responds to the script in ways that I don't think any of us saw coming. I mean, they really love it. You two have some laugh out loud scenes, uh, your characters. Um, and Don, in this movie, you get to romance uh, Jane Fonda, which had to be a good time, huh? <laughs> <laughs> well, it's, it's actually like one of those um, uh, art following life situations. I've, I've had a crush on Jane forever. Uh, I made it very public and very known. And. Um, um, we finally got to work out, work it all through on, on the screen. A kind of fortunate thing. And how did that turn out? <laughs> all of it? Well, Jane is a very inventive person. <laughs> Don is, the men in this movie are, are wonderful. It's Don and Andy Garcia, Richard Dreyfus. Craig T. Nelson. Craig yeah. T. Nelson, who plays Mary's husband, who's wonderful and funny and very touching. That's what I love, too, is seeing these males, uh, male leads, like Andy Garcia. I was like, I haven't seen him on screen in so long. I loved that. Um, how was it for you guys to all be together as a cast on set and realize, wow, we're getting to work with some of our favorite people? Well, um, we, because of the way the, the, the schedule was kind of organized, we all didn't, they got to be together, the, the ladies got to be together, but I was with Jane and uh, uh, Craig T was with Mary, and and Richard Dreyfus was with Candace, and and so on and so forth. Andy was with Diane, and so we didn't get to interact much. But um, I I heard some of the stories and the, the of of these ladies uh, um, sharing uh, 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 growing up in show business stories, and I <laughs> only wish I could have been a fly on the wall for that. Yeah, what are these some store? Can you share some of these stories that you shared among each other? <laughs> It was, I mean, just uh, Jane and I both grew up in in Hollywood, in Beverly Hills, and, and she used to ride a horse to school, which I thought was <laughs> astonishing, frankly. And, I mean, if if you could see Jane, she is jaw-droppingly gorgeous, and her, her figure is just, you just want to slink off into the bushes someplace. Um, and But we would talk about growing up and in Beverly Hills in the old days there. and That's it. Yeah, how about you, Mary? Any 
any stories from growing up in Hollywood or being a part of this Hollywood madness for so many years? So I grew up in a little house in Arkansas. My dad was a freight train conductor. So um, these stories were deeply, deeply unsatisfying compared to the stories they were telling. So mostly I listened, but it was um, it was astounding. I mean, they are, and and then it was also beautiful how much we had all like had similar experiences once we were young, you know, actors and knew a lot of the same people, but none of us had ever worked together before of the women. I'd worked with Don before. I've been married to Don once and Craig T. Nelson twice. Wow. Yeah. Lucky Candace lady. is the only one. I'm still waiting for the T. consummation on that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, everyone has been with Craig T. Nelson, right? Except but everyone, everyone. He's a slut. <laughs> he is a little slut. Candace, are you looking forward to one day being married to Craig T. Nelson on screen? <laughs> he's too young for me, Craig. I mean... Never. No, never no, say no. that. Yeah, by this time, he's been passed around so much. I mean... Yeah. She doesn't we've want all him. Aged him. We've all broken him in. <laughs> uh, when you guys were writing and crafting these characters, did you have these ladies in mind? Absolutely. Uh, I mean, we've followed their careers. We're massive fans, so it was really like us in the room writing and, and dreaming of having them in our movie. We we actually, the Diane character was Diane in the script, and Jane was Jane in the script, but she changed her name at the end. And Candace, Bill and I were just sort of were thinking, well, who would we want in this movie? And thought of Candace. And I mean, the fact that you can think of those things and then send it to them, and then they say yes, it's pretty outstanding, I have to say, to have your dreams actually come true. Yeah, we're still kind of shocked that we got, like, literally across the board, <laughs> the people that we had sort of written it for and imagined in it. And you never think as a writer when you're just there with your laptop in a coffee shop that, like, you'll even be able to send it to them, let alone have them say yes and then actually go make the movie. So... And just still, I mean, we see the poster, we're still like, wow. I know, and as far as Mary, I just want to say, I always thought it was going to be Mary from the beginning, but uh, you, at the Aaron. end of the day, I did, I did. I'm a huge fan. So at the end, we asked the women, because the three of them were cast, and we said, you know, we had some ideas of people, and Mary was the one that all three of them said yes. So that's really how, it's true, you don't remember? <laughs> <laughs> it's a long time ago. I was overwhelmed. <laughs> <laughs> we might not have asked Candace. I can't remember. We did ask you. <laughs> it's too late now, Candace. <laughs> so let's talk about... Would that be funny if you said, yeah, I said no. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't want Mary. I don't think I got But I wanted Craig T. Nelson. <laughs> yeah. um, Mary, are you alike your character at all? So your character in this, um, you know, she's, she's in a happy marriage, but while reading the book, she discovers maybe something new about herself that she wants to test the boundaries a little, get a little frisky, I'll say. Um, what was that like to play this character? Do you have any similarities to her? Um, no, we're not going. Get, we're not going through the same uh, uh, sexual issues, but but um, and that's enough said about that. But um, but I am like her in that I like scaring myself a little bit. And she, my character, does something at the end of the movie that is scary to her. And um, and I like, I, I am like that. I like, I like every once in a while doing something that makes me deeply <laughs> uncomfortable. So I feel really alive. I mean, you know, certain people drive race cars or whatever. I it usually has to do with music or something like that. And how about your character? She's a judge. She's kind of, you know, she's been divorced for a few years, and she decides she's going to go on some dating sites and, and, and experiment. Have you ever done that yourself? No. I, I've always been married. I, um, uh, so, uh, no. And, and, and if I weren't married, I don't, I don't know that I could face it. I couldn't. And what was it like reading the script, though, and knowing you had to play this character? Did you, was it fun to kind of oh, it was a great be in character. that world? Yeah. I, 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 I loved the character. She was... She was I mean, she was a federal judge. She'd um, really accomplished a lot. She lived with her cat. She didn't know that her life was as empty as it really was. Um, and, uh, and, and the book, you know, brings everyone sort of back to life in different ways. And for your character, Don, uh, do you have a memorable scene working with, with Jane? What was one of your most fond memories on set? Oh, uh, well, actually, I do. Uh, we were shooting at uh, the, the, the fountain scene at, um, 
uh, right near USC, and there's a and the Rose Garden is right there, and um, we were standing waiting for the for the shot and for uh, Bill to to say we're all ready, and Jane was wearing these heels, and we were standing on turf, and her right heel sank down into the turf. And she couldn't get it out. And so she started to tipple over towards these giant rose bushes. And I'm like in slow motion <laughs> trying to catch Jane. Be, and so and she falls into the rose bushes. And I go, oh, well, we're done. That's a wrap. <laughs> and um, uh, so I, I help her out of the rose bushes. And I, and I look at her and, and I said, are you dead? Are you? <laughs> and she says, no, no, I'm fine. I'm fine. I just have a little scratch and a little... Uh, there was a little tear in her her uh, dress and the wardrobe. She says, "I'm fine, let's go." Wow! And we went. <laughs> and she, she's Jane yep. Fonda. Yeah, yeah, she she really is Jane Fonda. She is. She is all that. All that core strength too. It was much easier to get up out of that rose bush than most of us would have. <laughs> that was yeah. also day one with Jane Fonda. That was her oh, first yeah. day. Yeah. Day one, scene one. Arguably, yes, maybe her first setup. So. <laughs> How are you guys going to move on for, to a different cast after working with We're retiring. Like That's it. That. <laughs> We've yeah, peaked, for sure. It's a major job. We, they really, we thought that it would be this little tiny, it was a very low-budget movie. We didn't even know if we'd have a distributor, and then the movie got bought by Paramount. And, and, and then we saw it at a screening for 1,200 people in Los Angeles, and we realized this is a big movie. And uh, really, I mean, Bill made a movie that holds the room that the audience loves and responds to in the most sort of full and raucous way. Um, so uh, really, and who knew if Bill could make a movie? We really had yeah. no idea. We liked, we <laughs> liked Bill. He's a nice guy. But, but who knew if Bill could make a damn movie? We knew he could write one. But uh, I, I, actually, you know, this is as close to... Um, how we all probably thought about being into the business in the first place is that, you know, you get together with your friends and say, let's put on a show. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's what this, that's yeah. what the experience was like for, for me at least. And, and it kind of feels that way, um, with, with, with everybody. And that's, that's just joyful when you get together and say, hey, there's, look at this piece of material. This is fun. Let's do this, you know? Mm -hmm. And then to, for it to, be successful and to, to sort of get the kind of uh, attention and and um, and uh, respect that it deserves. It's uh, it's uh, icing on the cake. I'm sure it's nice to kind of go in with blind faith for a first time director and and to just have that support and and trust in his vision. Did you feel that as soon as you got on set? Um, I I thought I did I was you know you, you but I've worked with a bunch of first time directors and and a lot of them uh the movie was you know not great and and a couple of them I haven't even seen because I, I just heard no don't even bother so <laughs> so uh, that's sad and but I I didn't feel that from him we had a read through at Candace's house and he had four women at this read through that were all a little bit scared, you know, a little bit like brave, but scared at the same time. And he and Aaron handled this moment so beautifully that that actually is what gave me a lot of faith on, oh, maybe they can wrestle the four of us, you know. And then the fact that the from the very first day, I kept waiting for the diva or waiting for the egomaniac or the person that was in makeup for to two hours after the rest of us, and that never happened. I mean, we brought it. It was four people excited to work with each other. And then this amazing cast of guys that we felt, we just, everybody was so blessed and lucky to get to work with, you know? So um, I, I feel like, you know, the quiet, he was like the stealth director that could do it all alone, you know? And, 
I'm really proud of you. Thank you yeah. very much. Yeah. Thank you guys. Just a side story on this read through. It was day one of meeting the four of them. It was just Bill and I, and we get there, and, and I had gone to my bag or something, and I come back, and Bill says, uh, FYI, you're reading all the other roles in the movie. Oh, that was true. That was horrible. You I was like, and what? the stage directions. <laughs> and the stage directions. I, had to read the, I got to read the entire movie playing opposite of these four women the first time I ever met them. And Greatest day of right my life. Yeah. <laughs> and now you want to be an actress, right? <laughs> nope. <laughs> Uh, Kent, yeah, Candace, how did you host this read-through? Was it kind of similar to a book club vibe? Did you guys have wine and cheese and, and all that? I think we had uh, sort of snacky things and drinks, but <laughs> I, I just, I know from television, when you, you customarily read through a script and then, then you start to rehearse it and shoot it, and, and a read-through is a very helpful thing to have, and it breaks the, the ice, it breaks the first moments of shooting nerves and and it, it's just helpful to to and to hear the words out loud now have you guys any of you been in a book club before Not or me. are in a book club yeah i i have been in a book club on martha's vineyard but it was it was a little more serious it, it was actually like uh sweetly going to school yeah. you know uh, it, I mean, we read Beowulf at one point. Oh. So that's a little different from this book club. Yeah. <laughs> and, and for some bizarre reason, we didn't drink, which now, I now don't even understand the point. That was not a book club, I'm that's sorry. That's not a real <laughs> book, book club. club. No. Anyone else in a book club? I am in a book club of, of two. <laughs> Me and my friend in San Francisco. What do you uh, guys read? Cool. What kind of books? Um, well, he, he's sort of my finder. He goes and finds really interesting books, and then I call him and say, what have you got for me? I'm getting on a plane. And he, I, he's sent me some fabulous uh, historical uh, um, novels. There's a, there's a book that we read together called um, Bones on the Zahara, and it's just one of these sweeping epic-type books that uh, is based. It's, it's nonfiction, um, but... Um, um, how do you say that when you when you we dra dramatize nonfiction, and um, um, and I read mostly nonfiction um, books, but occasionally I you know I'll I'll pick up one of the one of the screamers. Do you guys get together afterwards and discuss it. Uh, we yeah we talk oh, we great. we text over the phone we say, and I I tell him his recent selection sucks and he. <laughs> So, Candace, you're not in a book club, but are you... Well, a Mary recommended a book to me that I'm just finishing now oh, called yeah. A Gentleman in Moscow that is a very good read, mm -hmm. and um, we'll talk later. <laughs> oh, I'd love if you guys really started this book club in, in, yeah. in the flesh, right? I'm reading a right? good one. I'm reading a book called Pachinko that's really sweeping epic. You might like it. I, I'll, it's a I, novel. I'm in. I see a book club forming here. <laughs> <laughs> I would love to be in a book club with men. That would be fascinating. Would. Yeah. You guys can just drink wine or beer and talk about <laughs> books. And I'm sure as actors, too, do you guys read books and think, oh, this would make a great script? Do you ever pitch anything like that? Well, that particular book has been snatched up, and they are making a film of it, A Gentleman in Moscow. Well, I do want to open it up to some audience questions. So who's first? Hi, this question is for Don and Candace and Mary. You've all done different kinds of roles in your careers. Obviously, Miami Vice, Murphy Brown, Melvin and Howard stick out to me and probably a number of other people in here, the audience my age. Which is your favorite kind of role over the years that you have done or perhaps hope to do in the future? Go. Oh. Um, hmm. You know, I, I just wake up pretty much every day, and if I'm working, and I have been for... The, in June, it'll be my 50th year as a professional. And uh, the, the, the joy of being able to take on new characters and, and, the, and to still be relevant um, uh, into my have 60s. Have you ever done comedy? I have. I have, but not a lot of comedy. Um, it's funny, though. You uh, went, that's what you and I did. But yeah, yeah. It, we did a Mary pilot. says I'm funny. I, I, I don't funny. know. It was the hardest yeah. work I've ever done in my life. Yeah. Um, but, um, um, yeah, they, you know, they're, all of them are fun. They're, they're just different. I don't find all of them fun, but, um, <laughs> but I, I, Murphy Brown was by far the best character. Which is coming back. 
It is coming back. Where it will so be on the air in September. But we're just doing 13 episodes. But Murphy Brown was, I think, one of the best written characters, the best developed script. I mean, it reminded me of the great 1930s, 40s comedies of Hollywood. And, and uh, so I, I feel really blessed to have gotten to do that. And the great Diane English is working with her again. And it's an interesting time for Murphy to be looking at the world. Many fields to plow. Yeah. <laughs> Mary, what's some of your favorite uh, roles or work um, that you've done? You know, I, uh, well, I, I had a wonderful run and time on a, the weirdest show on television that even most of my friends probably didn't watch, but it was such a creative experience, and that was Last Man on Earth. Sure, and we just got canceled, so you don't have to applaud. Boo. But, yeah. <laughs> but um, I enjoyed every moment of it because it was strange and unpredictable and creative and fun. And I'm kind of like Don. I'm, I, this is a moment in my life. When I was younger, I looked at the age of 65, and I thought, oh, uh, well, I probably won't work very much then. I probably won't get to work, you know, do movies or TV shows. And and I, so I'm really glad that it didn't turn out that way because I derive great pleasure from acting. I love the whole thing of it. I love that challenge of taking words that are on paper and make them live and breathe, but also just the the prosaic bits of it, getting up and being in the makeup trailer and starting your day with these people who are also there with a common cause. It's like it's like joining the circus in a way, and I love it. What does it mean to all of you? You know, you mentioned this before, but this is, this is a very powerful movie for not only the fact that it's the four of you, but it's women uh, and men uh, of your age playing your age. It, how does that really feel to be a part of this and, and you know, to bring it to audiences and to show this should be the norm, this should happen all the time, go to the theater and go see it? It'll depend how this one does. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. You know, I, 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 it's funny, I, I, don't, I just don't feel, the, um, I, I, don't, I don't feel age. Mm -hmm. I still feel the same I did when I was 16, you know sort of uh, goofy and unruly, you know. And, As you, and you should. Yeah, <laughs> and, it's, and it served me well, so I'm just going to keep it going. Well, I feel like stories shouldn't stop at a certain, like, you, what, you turn 35 and stories just stop? I mean, there's so many different things you can do with so many um, different actors out there. Is that Bill, is that why you kind of wanted to make this movie, is something different? Yeah, I mean, the interesting thing is we never made the movie thinking about an untapped audience or an unserved market. I mean, we really, we literally, we were just sitting there writing a movie that we really like wanted to see. And also with themes that we really want. I know it sounds ridiculous and Candace is not, but, but it is, it's like, we really wanted to see. And these actors are, I mean, we love their movies. So it was for us, it was like, it was just an opportunity to, to sort of make a movie that we thought we would really like. Mm -hmm. oh, Who's next? Other than the Rose Bush incident. Can the three of you tell us your most memorable blooper moment during the filming of this movie or any other time in your acting career? Oh. I'm sure there are a lot of bloopers. Right? <laughs> really broad questions. I have a blooper moment, but it wasn't this movie. I did a movie called Step Brothers with. Um, no so, one's heard yeah. of that, right? <laughs> <laughs> and there is actually a scene that we never completed. Um, as a scene where Will Ferrell is in the back seat of the car, and I, the mother of the middle-aged man, am driving him somewhere, but he's in the back seat. And I don't know if it was just that or something. I don't even remember what this the scripted scene was about because we also improvised a lot in that that movie a lot, but we could not complete the scene. And I, that's the only scene I've ever been in in my life that. We never, there was no completed scene. We finally gave up. Like we tried, one of us would get through it and the other would go and, and it kept reversing and there, we just finally gave up. I mean, it's in the movie, but a very truncated little. Uh, on, on Murphy Brown, Grant Shaw, who plays Miles, the, the network producer, and I always had trouble not making each other laugh. And then finally, once we 
we did a scene where Murphy is in a prison and she's in a she's knitted something that's the length of the room and Miles comes in and she looks up and says grandpa and I mean, it was just and we we couldn't stop laughing and finally Diane English started looming or she said it was 20 minutes that we kept the audience waiting she said okay it's time now how about you Don blooper uh, oh well god um <laughs> <clears throat> One time I was directing an episode of, uh, of Miami Vice, and I'd set up this elaborate shot from the roof of a building and down low on the street, and the car was coming around, and we were chasing bad guys. And the, uh, um, the Ferrari was a stick shift Ferrari, of course, and um, it, was all, it all had to go in a certain amount of timing. And I pulled the car around, and um, uh, Philip, who played Tubbs, had already jumped out of the car, and he was chasing the bad guys. And I threw open my door, and I was reaching for my gun, and my foot got stuck between the clutch and the brake. And the car kept going like this, ka-chink, ka -chink, <laughs> towards a building. And so the car crashes into the building, and we're getting all this on film, so it's all going back to Universal. And I'm still stuck in the car. The crew runs over, and they're looking at the damage on the car. And I'm going, what about me? <laughs> it was hilarious. I'm like, I'm a stunt man. Yeah. Love that. All right, we have time for one more. Here we go. Hi. Uh, this is going to be an online question. Um, Josh would like to know, what are some of the favorite books that you have ever read? I, um, there's so many. I mean, my gosh, there's so many great books. Um, could he be more specific? <laughs> well, I, I, I loved a book that is a nonfiction book called The White Nile and the Blue Nile. There are two, and it's about, it's about travel and developing Africa in the 17th century and explorers and discovering the Nile and, um, and, and I read a book that by a woman called Jane Gardam called Old Filth, which is um, uh, about an orphan of the British Empire, and and, um, and I, I loved that. Anyone else want to share their books? Um, the only thing that uh, um, I, I started reading uh, Jack London when I was in my 20s, and, and I read everything that he had written called The Wild and everything. And I got so into Jack London that I actually read his letters that he had written. And um, so, you know, that's one that comes to mind. But, I mean, I've had some wonderful, wonderful experiences with, with great books. Well, yeah. I, have I had a weird uh, relationship to a book. Or, I don't know if it's weird, but I read Catcher in the Rye like everybody else did when, when I was young. And then I read it again a few years ago, you know, obviously having become a mother and a grandmother, and it was such a different read. It was so, it felt like I was reading a book about an abandoned kid, like who's looking out for this kid? You know, but I didn't think, of, you don't see it when you're reading it when you're young. You're just thinking like, wow, I wish I was like him, living in New York, doing whatever I wanted. It's just, it was such a different read to read it at different points in my life. Yeah, I get that. Yeah. yeah. Any for you? <laughs> we, we actually read a lot, but we keep getting asked this question and go completely blank. But uh, um, I actually read a book called The Fish That Ate the Whale, The Life and Times of the Banana Man, which is a great book. And I love Bridges of Madison County. I cried through the whole book, so. Aaron. <laughs> you, you laughing at me? <laughs> It's a good one. I, you know, it's, it's embarrassing. I know. I start a lot of books because we get sent books, and you have to read books that way. It's we books have been kind of damaged in a way for us because it's become part of this part of the job. But um, books that I've loved recently, and I'm behind the times. I loved Art of Fielding. Um, I read a book, Empire of Deception, which a Canadian author, which was a great, great read and a true story. And, and I'm from Chicago, and it's about Chicago. So those are a couple of recent. And Fifty Shades of Grey, of course. And well, of course. Of <laughs> but I really prefer the audio book. <laughs> <laughs> well, everyone, grab an audio book and listen to the books and then go see Book Club. It comes out this Friday. Thank you all so much for being Thank here. You. It's yeah. a lovely movie. So much fun. Thank you.